Hey guys, this is Callum from English Shooting and welcome back to the channel and the Bluefield Sports Gum Room because I have finally got my hands on an almost standard Chris Defiance. A very popular rifle here in the UK and internationally. I can understand why they've been around for a few years. Many people have, uh, have had them that I know over that period and at the time it was filling sort of a gap in the market which I think was sort of crying out for something like this. I previously did have a video uh, of a very heavily customized and modified Chris Defiance from my friend Daniel Smerald, and I didn't think it was right to do a review based on that gun, seeing as things have been changed so much on it. But this is probably the closest to standard that I've had in my hand. So let's go over the standard features that you would get out of the box. Well, first of all, it's branded defiance everywhere. Chris really wanted you to know what you were shooting. So the adjustable stock here is defiance branded, your grip is defiance branded, even your flip up iron sights are defiance branded. Those all come standard with the gun. Now you do have the addition here of the Maglode Magwell and we have an upgraded ambi safety from Trinity Force. So I think it comes with just a standard mil spec safety out of the box. And of course, with the iron sights there, we're not using them because we have this Strike Eagle 1 to 6 by 24. I'd highly recommend this as a sort of a beginner, sort of entry level scope. Really, really popular and perform really well. Of course, that doesn't come with the gun. So you've got your operational dust cover, you've got a Ford Assist. It has been fitted with an enlarged Magpul mag release and the forend is proprietary to Chris as well. So the, the handguard being proprietary, what does that mean? For some reason, Chris decided to put its own rail mounting system, which means you have to buy Chris's own uh, rail mounted sort of segments. Why they couldn't have gone for something like M-Lock or even just make it full Picatinny or just not even bother. Uh, because it's just for me a money making uh, scheme overall and that annoys me quite a bit. So many different systems available that everyone is well used to and they have to sort of go and design their own. Now, a lot of people get confused in terms of how mil spec this gun is, and it seems to be one of the big draws. It's full metal, it has a hard anodized aluminium alloy construction, so it does have a bit of weight to it. It does feel like, say, a 223 or 556 AR, and I know a lot of people go for that, but it isn't fully mil spec, so it doesn't have an operational uh, buffer tube, and also the barrel is actually. I, I believe very similar, if not identical, to the uh, Ruger 1022 barrel. So I know a lot of people do drop in upgrade 1022 barrels to it. I'm not sure how much work is involved, whether it. it's something that you could do at home. I'm sure any competent gunsmith is going to be able to uh, sort of help you out on that. Apart from that, yes, everything else you can swap out, even the, the four rem. So if you're as annoyed, uh, as I am with the proprietary mounting system, then you can just swap it out for a mil spec AR. The gun comes with a five and a half pound single stage trigger. You can drop in any replacement that you want, which is which is great, and I always recommend that on a standard rifle, especially if you're gonna be taking it into competition. You've also got a 16 and a half inch barrel. That comes on uh, all the variants, as does the trigger. And in terms of the weight, it does depend which variant you go for. Let's just call this the standard variant uh, from Chris, but they also do the Defiance LVOA, which comes with a very unique and interesting looking forend. It's for me the one that I would go for if I was to go for a Chris. Uh, it does add on an extra hundred pound to the price. So the standard starts at 950 pound. And if you want the LVOA, then you're gonna be looking at uh, 50 quid over a thousand pound. The other appeal for these guns as well out of the box is the amount of different color options. It comes in uh, the black, the flat dark earth, the alpine arctic white, which is very stormtroopery. I remember grabbing a lot of attention at the shows and again, would probably be the one that personally I would go for. You also have the olive drab green and the combat 
Gray. So for people that were getting into the sport, people that were just sort of moving over to say the 2.2 ARs, getting into mini rifle competitions, I can understand the appeal of something that is, you know, almost mil spec you can drop in a lot of uh, mil spec components something that is full metal and has the weight and is of course available in a variety of colors giving you that extra little bit of flair another selling point for me of the rifle is going to be that you can use the 1522 magazines in there i do believe you need to add a chip to it and also get the catch 22 adapter so that the last round bolt hold open works on them but they're not particularly expensive to get. And these magazines are very reliable, very well known. The gun itself to add comes with a standard 15 round magazine and they're actually also black dog compatible. So if you don't want to go for the conversion uh, and run the 1522, you can get black dog magazines, which are very well known, very well proven. Uh, so that's a potential option as well. But for me, that's where the the good news stops with this rifle. Now, I have recommended this over the years as a potential option. If you're looking for something close to mil spec and you're looking for something that is full metal and, and sort of full weight of a, a, a say, a 223 AR, uh, I have recommended the Chris Defiance. Unfortunately, my recommendations are going to stop from now on because when taking this down the range, I had endless problems with it. Now this isn't a demo gun, it is a, you know, a friend of a friend that's brought it down and lent it for me to be able to review. So I don't know whether you know there's it's particularly dirty or if there is a known issue with the gun, but I had endless malfunctions, failure to extract, failure to feed, and all sorts of jams which was causing me to, you know, on multiple occasions, um, take down the rifle and clear the jam. There was just no other way to do it um, apart from taking the rifle down. And I ran a number of different uh, rounds through it. Of course, my go-to test round, the, C uh, the CCI Mini Mag. For me, I always say, if a gun doesn't work with that, it's the gun, not the ammunition. And I had loads of problems with it. I just, even with Mini Mag, I couldn't seem to get through a single magazine without a malfunction. There's also CCI Standard that I put through it. The issues increase with CCI standard. I think it's because of the lower velocity. And then when I went to sort of the cheap and dirty MagTech, which is not one I use to really pinpoint reliability and, and test rifles with, because I don't know whether it's the ammunition or the rifle. Well, the Chris Defiance paired with the MagTech was incredibly frustrating. It was just you know, like 50-50, whether it seemed to work. So my experience has, haven't been that good. And speaking of Daniel's rifle, whilst at the time it ran really well and he's had fairly good reliability out of it, he has reported a number of fairly catastrophic instances with out of battery detonation. He still doesn't know whether it was the ammunition or the rifle, but I have heard many different issues with the Chris Defiance. More recently, there was a customer here of Blue Field Sports where Connors ended up having to convert it to a proper buffer tube because whilst there's sort of a blanking plate there, the uh, the bolt assembly had actually punched its way through. So again, that sort of leans to maybe where they've skimped with the quality of metal and overall finish of the rifle from Chris. So. You know, it's not a particularly cheap gun. You know, you can get the 1522 for about 600 pounds and this is 300 pound more. To have a gun that doesn't seem to have as, as good a quality as say the 1522 and it's 300 pound more with all the reliability issues that I've experienced as, as well as all of the, the reports. In the marketplace today in the UK, there are so many other options. You have the L119A22 from Cotswold Classic Arms, which is pretty much the same price. You even have the Lantac SF15. And for me, I would stay well clear of the Chris Defiance and go for something from Cotswold Classic Arms or even uh, the Lantac SF15. So I was looking forward to it. I know that these rifles are popular. I know there are going to be many owners that are going to try and defend this, um, you know, to, to the nth degree. And yes, sometimes you get ones that are really good, some you're really bad. And for me, the, 
the closest thing I can compare this to is say the Stoger uh, M3000, the gun that I've used for a number of years now and I've had really good reliability with, but then I know that you can get some that are absolutely terrible and everything just falls apart on the 10th shot. Uh, so I would be wary of looking at a Defiance. Everyone, you, know, you ask most people that have owned them, they've had some issues at some point uh, and I can completely understand where those stories have come from. But it is an option on the UK market. I just think potentially your money would be better spent elsewhere. So there we go guys, my full review of the Chris Defiance DMK 22 c in 22 Rimfire. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Have you had one and, and has it run flawlessly or have you experienced similar issues as I've described today? If you did enjoy the video, please make sure you give it a big thumbs up and of course make sure you're subscribed for future videos and as always guys, I hope to see you soon.